for the introduction. <laughs> Couldn't help it, folks, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm Anthony Bale, folks, and uh, my goal is really simple for today. Uh, if you get one idea or one tip for what I'm going to share with you over the next 10 or 15 minutes, and you implement it in your business, then the time we share together will have been uh, of great value to us all. So, so here's the challenge, really. Uh, the, the reality is we have to improve, change, and grow just to keep up. Uh, in the ever-increasing competition in the marketplace. And I'm sure all of you would agree with me, uh, we're rarely always full all the time. So a few more customers on a daily basis, be it five or ten every single day, would add a considerable amount to our businesses. Uh, I, I like this one, by the way. For some of us, if we've been in the industry uh, for a, a long period of time, we may feel that we are not totally in control, feeling like we may be in the wrong building, or the economy is against us, or Brexit is going to destroy us all, and we're all doomed. Of course we're not. But it's kind of a sense of not fully in control, and that can be quite stressful, especially if you're running uh, your business on tight cash flow and low profits. And we can get sometimes for some of us to a point where we feel we're just hanging on in by a thread and we start to ask ourselves questions. Is it really worth all the blood, sweat and tears that we've actually put into our businesses? Of course, it doesn't have to be like this. We can, when we get handle all these things, get into a position where we're fuller most of the time. Now, no matter how good you are, you're never going to be full all the time. But I'm sure you'd agree you can be fuller most of the time. You get a great sense of confidence and energy and focus when you get more things in control. Of course, when you get these things boxed off, you're going to end up with a lot more revenue, much fatter profits, and you're going to basically get out of whatever tight cash flow issues that you may be experiencing. Probably the best part, though, is you start to feel really, really proud of your operation because you've developed a team and you have systems in place so the business actually operates whether you're there or not very, very smoothly. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to actually go about the business of filling our venues, attracting more customers and making more money? There's three key areas I'm going to share with you today, and I only have time for three. There is more, but there's only time for three today. And they are attract, serve, and profit. With attract, we must start at the beginning. And the key to bear in mind here is, well, who do we want or who are we for? It's very important that we get crystal clear on the who. It's vital, in fact. When I work uh, with my clients, I've usually been in business for quite a period of time. So we get them to start focusing on who they're currently or actually serving right now and who they want to serve in the future. Equally, we get them very crystal clear on what services they actually have to offer. It amazes me when I work with a lot of my clients how many different services that they actually provide that their customers don't know that they provide. And of course, we get folks on what extra can we actually do for our customers. When I work with our clients, we always start off with what is what's known as our PAM file. And if you're in business, I encourage you to consider uh, creating a PAM file for yourself. First and foremost, it's about what products do we actually have. So let's say, for example, you're a hotel. Uh, chances are you're going to have a mix of different bedrooms. You're going to have a twin room, a family room, a, a bridal suite. Uh, you're going to have corporate rooms, you're going to have banqueting suites, and conferencing, and conferencing as well. But if you're a bar and restaurant, you're probably going to have a breakfast product, a lunch product, a dinner product, an a la carte product. And of course, the hotels are going to have all of these products as well. But we've got to get clear on well, who are these products actually for? Who's the target customer? Who is the audience? You'll find that every different product and offering that we actually have is going to cater for a slightly different audience. And once we're clear on what audience and what products that we actually have, we're going to consider what's the best medium for us to pick and choose. Which one will make the biggest impact for us? And in relation to marketing, I would strongly encourage you to never put all your eggs in one basket. Marketing requires multiple strategies to the maximum effect. And of course, once that's decided, you've got to get clear on the messaging. It's really important that whatever messaging that you're sending out is relevant to your, to your customers and to your audience, but equally it kind of tells them what to do next. There should be a very crisp, clear call to action. Far too many promotions or advertisements, they don't tell people what to do and people look and say, okay, that was nice, what do I do now? So make sure you tell them what to do next. In, in, uh, in 
happening now, of course, um, there's a lot of confusion out there. There are hundreds and hundreds of different strategies that you can choose to pick from. Everything ranging from traditional uh, media to online, social media, different platforms. And I suppose a lot of business owners struggle in deciding on which ones to pick for their business. That's not as actually hard as we think when we've already done the work of considering who we're for. When you consider who your products and your services are actually for, it gets a lot easier to decide on which mediums are best to use. And consider your demographic, just to give a kind of a little example there. Say for your, your, you're going after the 20-something market, or perhaps you're going after the mature the market that has a larger disposable income. Will the 20-something market be listening to the local radio or reading the local newspaper or checking out flyers? And equally, will the mature market be spending hours and hours on social media platforms online? So it's really important to get clear on what is most likely to make an impact. I'm just going to give you a story here about a multiple strategies approach from a client of mine. Now, uh, this particular client would normally, in years gone by, only start to consider uh, their Christmas offering around that, uh, the middle of September or so. And they were a large bar restaurant. And uh, they'd only really be starting to get bookings in or chasing bookings for their business after Halloween. As the, the consideration was, ah, people are not ready to buy. And that's fair enough. In fairness, they were quite successful. But we made some changes. We decided much earlier in the year just gone. We got going on this in June, which I believe. Uh, first, we created the package as in what were they going to do and for who they actually wanted to do it for. We picked a particular audience that was within 20 minutes of the premises, so it was easy to get to for them. And then we started going down the road of actually communicating regularly with that audience. Now this was a multiple strategy, and what the net effect was for this particular client was a 40% increase in their customer for the same period. What they actually had done was they started to capture information using a CRM, which I'll explain about that in a couple of moments. And they started to communicate regularly. First we sent a, a personalized letter with a brochure. Then we made a follow up phone call. The key here to bear in mind, it doesn't really matter what industry you're in, people buy from people. If you have an opportunity to speak with somebody, speak with them, it builds relationships. We then, because we had a CRM in place, and I will come back to that, um, we were able to capture more information and use it more regularly, and we were able to send out some emails and more follow-up calls. I'm sure you're all thinking, Jesus, this sounds like a whole heap of work. It was. It was a good bit of work. The net effect for them was they increased their revenue by 137,000 for the same, compared to the same period last year. It was a lot of money uh, for the work put in. So what actually happened here is we were able to move them into a systemized way of capturing more information, communicating more effectively. They started, they only had 150 contacts when they started. Now they have over 5,000. But we start now with their Facebook page also, they've actually doubled their, um, their followership. And I know somebody said Facebook doesn't work. I can tell you it does when it's done right. <laughs> So the thing to bear in mind, as I said, I come back to you with data, the more information that you have and the more of it that you use and communicate with, the better off your business will be. Now, of course, it's all about communicating relevant information, but I would encourage you to look into the use of a CRM. And a CRM is a customer relationship management system. And what it does is it helps you facilitate all your customers' information and it helps you segment it. As I mentioned earlier on, chances are you have a whole host of different products and services and they all require segmentation. And it helps you then uh, build your relationships with your customers and to manage all that information. Equally, it helps you communicate and become much more strategic. I would encourage you, if you're in the business of hospitality, to plan your year well in advance. There's always going to be busy days in the industry and when we're better organised and our information is going out, we actually fill up more often. Everybody knows about summer, Christmas, Mother's Day and all those different things. But if your customers don't know far enough in advance, you may be busy on the, on the day, but you won't maximise your business. So I suppose that a little advice would be make hay uh, when, when the sun shines. A lot of premises on particular days would say uh, things like, geez, if only we had a bigger place, we'd sell it seven or eight or nine or ten times. So first and foremost, consider what is your premises actually capable of doing? To give a little story here, um, a client of mine, um, their busiest ever day in the past was 275 customers in any given day. And the reason that they were only catering for 275 is that when customers called in, 
to book a table, they pick the time that they actually want. Yeah, that's a pretty standard thing that happens out there. But we made a little change. We actually created what's known as the cities for the bigger days. What that meant, when customers called in, they got a choice of one time or another time. The net effect of that for this particular customer was they moved from doing the biggest number they ever done was 275 to actually serving 355 on a regular basis. And now they're actually expanding and building their business even more based on maximizing. I would encourage you if you are in the business and you already don't have sittings, do so because you'll find the busier premises will always have sittings and that's kind of where you want to get to. So my encouragement will be plan the year ahead, but when you make a change, uh, make sure your people actually know about it. Who's actually going to be taking the phone calls? Make sure they're included. Because it's one thing to sit up in an office and say, yes, that's a great idea. But it's another thing for it to actually happen in reality on the floor. Equally, make sure when we're informing the customers, because they're the most important people, that we do it in the right way. It's really important that we do it in the right way and as much in advance as we possibly can. And of course, agree your timings with the kitchen well in advance to make sure they can actually handle the extra output. Of course, the whole goal is to serve more people. So we've touched on that, how to uh, get more customers, but getting more customers is completely irrelevant if you can't keep them. And there's one word that's required, which is consistency. Consistency in the products that we're offering and the service that we deliver. What I find from working with my clients over the last number of years is the ones that have standards actually written and in place have a more loyal customer base, they get more repeat business, the reviews on their social medias and on TripAdvisor are much higher. And what I call that is a service journey. And of course, they actually sell a lot more. Now, I've worked with both, but the ones that actually have a standard in place always do better. Just to quickly go through what a service journey actually is, is we've got to get clear on why our customers are more. Now, I'm sure everybody sitting here already knows that. Of course, the reality is without customers, we don't have a business. Without a business, we don't have revenue. Without revenue, we don't have our incomes. And our whole livelihoods are actually affected. But when your staff don't understand that key point, they don't deliver the service as well as they could or as they should. When I share with my clients and their staff a key point, no matter what walk of life you're in, and because in the industry a lot of staff are just passing through, but no matter what walk of life you're in, you're going to be serving somebody at some point. Hands up here who is actually in employment or working for somebody or has their own business that serves somebody. Pretty much everybody. So that's my point actually made. But when a young member of, of the staff become aware that they're going to be looking after people their whole lives and the better that they do, the more employable they become, the longer they keep their jobs, and when it comes to setting up their own business, the better they are, they actually buy into customer care. The second thing is for too many people assume that people know how to look after customers. If you're in the industry, chances are the first thing that was ever said to you is greet people uh, and acknowledge them. But I want you to have a look at me for a second at just what I'm doing. So a greeting could be, hi, how are you? Or, who? Now that might sound a bit funny, but you will have seen that in bars and restaurants across the country. The house is simple enough, it's basically from step by step what should happen when a customer walks in the door all the way through and when they leave. But the how-to is far more important, sorry, bit anyway. The how-to is far more important because that goes into the detail on what way we deliver our service. It needs to be mapped out. Now I want you all to watch me for a second and what I'm doing, just for one second and pay attention. Hi, you're all very welcome to City West. My name is Anthony and I'm going to be looking after you all today. Hi. Oh, welcome to City West. My name is Anthony, and I'm going to be looking after you. Now, what I had said there, the words were the exact same. Would you agree with that? There was no different in the words. But I have no doubt, even though it was only a little tiny little role play, the feeling that you got from the first one was far better than the second one. The reality is the tone and body language give the words our meanings. If you have standards in place, I would encourage you to actually review them and make sure that body language and tonality is in them. And if you don't have standards, I would encourage you to get going and update them. Uh, Upselling is one of those terms that is bandied around the whole time. But when a staff member hears the term upsell, what they actually hear is push stuff on customers that they don't want, make the boss more money, uh, me work harder and get nothing. So the key thing to bear in mind with this is 
We're always here to deliver a wonderful experience to the customer. And when the crew understands all about the experience, they actually do better. Sales is simply asking good questions at the right time. And if you get this one question and implement it into your business, you can grow your business by one to seven euros straight away. And that simple question is, can I get you anything else or do you need anything else? Every time that question is asked, you're just finding out the opinion from the customer and that's the most important person. Lastly, I'm going to talk quickly about a bit of profit. And again, profit comes down to consistency. Consistency in the quality needs to always be good. The presentation always looks right. The team, they're actually able to produce it. And of course, when it makes some money, I'm sure you all agree, making a few quid is important. What we need in a word is a live recipe book. This is where we map out the chef's standards. It's of high quality and the team can have to actually reproduce it, whether a chef is on duty or not, ultimately make more money. Now some of you will have this in place and some of you won't. Here's one of the systems that I use, and as you can see there, it's quite a, a standard enough one, but it just goes into a bit of detail of what goes into it, how to make it, and the profit. But the backup of this is that it actually has a live pricing file with all the projects into it. What that means is as and when prices change, you know what profit you're actually making. And the final part of today is the summary. This is where you put your full menu in on one page and you can assess from a percentage and an actual monetary term what's making money. And of course, you start adjusting that to make more profit. And it is always about just putting pricing up. Unfortunately, I think I've run out of a bit of time. So, um, but I will be around if anybody has any questions. And I don't want to hold the, for the, the line for the next speaker. So just a couple of quick takeaways. Uh, start working on your attraction. Get clear on all your products, your audience, the medium to use, and your messaging. Make sure you focus on keeping your customers and building your standards. Of course, make a few quid. Um, thank you very much. I won't even bore you with there, there is an ebook available that goes into more depth and you can have a look at that. But I'm conscious of the time, so uh, thanks very much for giving your attention for the last uh, few minutes. Thank you.